you said we don't build the kingdom, we build for the kingdom. Correct. So, yeah. so d- really parse that out for us because I, I thought that and I went, oh no, I used to do this thing with church members where I would hand out hammers and yeah. when they become members, I would say, you're helping build the kingdom. And now I'm like, I need to feel like I have to go back and take back the hammers because I didn't say it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if you give them a sickle in the other hand, then they'll be building a different kind of. Kingdom oh, <laughs> you're killing me, Tom. <laughs> uh, but the the thing is this: Paul, in one of his letters, talks about his fellow workers for the kingdom of God. And when we see how Paul talks about the kingdom, he talks about it both as a present and as a future reality. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is already ruling the world. According to 1 Corinthians 15 and according to Matthew 28 and all over the place, the ascended Jesus is already Lord of the world. He doesn't have to wait for that. That's, That's the reality. But Paul then says he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. So he is ruling the world. But at the moment, there is a battle going on in the heavenlies, as in Ephesians chapter 6, with for which Christians are recruited to be prayer warriors and putting on the helmet of salvation and all the rest of it, um, because until death itself is conquered, then the new creation, which is the ultimate kingdom of God, um, hasn't happened yet. So we're in between. The kingdom has been launched decisively. Jesus is in charge, but it's Jesus who's in charge, not some tin pot tyrant. And Jesus is the Jesus who gives his life as a ransom for many. So the way he is in charge through his spirit is through his followers, giving their lives to look after the world and to bring God's hope and justice and, and mercy to the world. It's you know, Christians who who campaign to free slaves and, and that sort of thing, and, and plenty of other, other things besides. Um, so that's building for the kingdom. The point being that when God then does bring about God's kingdom finally and fully, What we do in the present will be seen to be little bits of anticipation of that, bits of God's future borrowed from the future, instantiated in the present as signposts to what's coming. So that's building for the kingdom. Um, If you know my book, Surprised by Hope, I use the example of a stonemason in a medieval cathedral um, workshop, and and they're, they're building this great cathedral. But the image then is of the stonemason who's just been told, I want you to carve this bit of stone, uh, put this little carve here, uh, this little curve here, uh, etc. And the stonemason probably doesn't have a very good picture in mind of what the whole cathedral is going to look like, just knows this is what's been given to him to do. But then when that bit of stone goes up on the wall of the west front of the cathedral and you stand back, you realise the tiny thing that I was doing that seemed so insignificant in the stonemason's yard is part of the much larger plan that the architect had in mind all along. So that's the sort of image that I have in mind when I talk about building for the kingdom in the present.